focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable. On the sidelines of the 12th Auto Expo in New Delhi was held Forbes India Conversations in Excellence presented by Mercedes-Benz powered by CNBC TV18 where eminent speakers spoke about how they have achieved excellence. Our next speaker for the evening was the poster boy of Indian tennis, Leander Pace. Just as Aristotle once said, I do believe that excellence is a culmination of a lot of hard work and some very very good choices. As a young boy, I grew up in Kolkata to two parents who were Olympians. My mother kept an India in basketball, all four feet nothing of her. I inherited my speed from my mom. My father, he was the workhorse, and he played field hockey for India in the 1972 Olympics. Interestingly, in Munich, he achieved a bronze medal. Growing up to parents like this, my two elder sisters and myself were very, very lucky to learn on the dining table what excellence in sport was all about. Mum believed that excellence came from repeatedly practicing your best weapons. My dad believed that excellence came about by repeatedly practicing your weaknesses so that there wouldn't be weaknesses no more. I believe that excellence and passion comes from practicing ironing both your parents' match jerseys for the country. As an eight-year-old, I used to take out their jerseys from their cupboard, I used to place them on the ironing board, and I used to spend hours on end just ironing in this deep blue that we play with our national jerseys. And my dream on that ironing board was to represent you in my first Olympics. It was a cold summer in Osaka, I played on a clay court surface that I wasn't comfortable on. And eventually, when I qualified for my first Olympics, I went off to Barcelona. And in 1992, just before I embarked on playing my first Olympics, my dad had one piece of advice. He said, son, this is your first one. You're hopefully going to play another one, so have fun. I listened to dad. I had a lot of fun in my first Olympics. And after we beat the top seeds, Woodford and Woodbridge in the first round, Ramesh Krishnan and myself in the doubles had a chance to covet a medal for India. We fell short in that quarterfinals, but another dream was born. And that dream was to try and do it in singles. Four years later, I represented India in Atlanta in 1996, and I spent three and a half years practicing on playing at an altitude. Why? Because I believe that in the Stone Mountain Arena in Atlanta, where we were playing at altitude, if I could hone my skills, my breath, my lungs, my lung capacity, my game, that I would, I would be able to achieve excellence in Atlanta. After three and a half years of playing a lot in South America, I ended up at Stone Mountain, and I drew Pete Sampras in the first round. I figured my dream was coming into an end quick, but I decided not to give up on that. I decided that karma, as we call it in India, was going to play itself out that week for me. Pete Sampras' clothing sponsor, I'm not going to take names for a, for a reason, was not allowed at that Olympics, so Pete had to sit out. And I played Richie Renneberg, a double specialist, in the first round. I won that match, subsequently beat one of my friends, Nicholas Pereira, in the second round, beat Thomas Enquist in the third, Renzo Furlan in the quarters. I ended up, ended up playing one of my dearest friends on the tennis circuit, Andre Agassi, in the semifinals. The morning of the semi-finals was a tough morning because I knew that my toughest opponent was Andre. I'm a servant volleyer, and Andre is the perfect machine on the baseline. When I got up that morning, I wasn't feeling that good, and later on that afternoon, I realized why. I was up 6-5 in the first set. Andre was serving at 15-40, and when he hit a first serve off the, off the service line, I chipped it to his back end corner, and I came in. When I positioned myself at the net, I figured I had the down the line covered, I figured I had the lob covered, and I figured I had the short cross court covered. But the sure excellence of the man and the brilliance of him was he realized that I knew I had most of the shots covered, and he rifled a backhand as hard as he could 
right at my jaw. That ball came to me pretty quick. <laughs> I had fractions of a second to react to it. And as I reacted, the ball came from here. I tried to play it into an open court, and I snapped my wrist tendon between my wrist and my elbow. Andre severed that wrist tendon 70%. The rest of my day was done. I won only another game after that. But interestingly enough, as karma has it, that was the first Olympics that the Olympic movement decided to give only one gold, one silver, and one bronze. For two Olympics before that in tennis, there was a gold, a silver, and both the semifinalists got a bronze. I was very pleased that they changed the rule that day. <laughs> I ended up putting my hand into a cast for 24 hours, and I came back after that to play one of my other friends, a Brazilian, Fernando Melangeni, in the bronze medal match. He played another baseline game, and you generally had to hit 20 shots before you won one point. I was in excruciating pain that afternoon when I played Fernando, and I was down a set, 6-1, and I was serving at 1-2 in the second. And I knew that at 30-40 down, if I had lost that point, my Olympic dream for that year was going to come to an end. At 30-40 that day, 1-2 down in the second and a set down, as I stepped in to serve, a little butterfly came and sat right onto my Prince Graphite Pro tennis racket. And what I'm saying to you today really speaks of how divine intervention and how a simple young Indian boy used his smarts to get mind over matter. When this butterfly flew onto my racket the first time, I was in so much pain that I didn't recognize the situation. And being a man who never kills anything, I took that butterfly to the side and I put it on a fence. And ladies and gentlemen, when I came back again to serve, that butterfly sat on my racket for the second time. And when she sat on my racket the next time, it came to me that this butterfly was a situation for me to distract my opponent that day. I picked her up onto my forefinger, I walked up to the net, I was able to distract a young man who was just on a threshold of winning his Olympic medal and play with the butterfly. I handed it over to him. He took it in his hand and he played with it and he put it up to the crowd. And the whole stadium went Rah. I figured I had him a little bit, but it wasn't quite enough yet. So when he gave it back to me again, I started talking about the colors of that butterfly. I said, see, she's red, white and blue, just like the American flag where we're playing. And he picked it up again, he goes, yeah, that's right. And by then, Fernando had forgotten about tennis. I walked back to the baseline, and for 45 minutes, the excruciating pain that was in my wrist for the whole 24 hours before disappeared. I served an ace, I had a servant volley, I won that point, won that game. I won the set 6-4. And when I was serving for the match and my bronze medal, at 5-4 in the third set, I came up to the service line again, and as I bounced the ball, it was like the world had just opened up again. I suddenly came out of what we as tennis players and as athletes know as the zone. I was in the zone for 45 minutes, and as I bounced that ball, the pain came back into my wrist, and my mind recognized it. My brain, my senses, my being recognized how much agony I was in. The next four points, I played with a blurry vision. I got four first serves in. I made four first volleys. And when that final ball sailed across my head and sailed long, I achieved a little bit of history, which to me comes in a three-inch circumference bronze medal. And I won India's first individual medal. <laughs> but what the real story is here that every one of us have achieved excellence, not only because the talent that we have, but because of the perseverance, the smarts, the student-like ability, and doing every single thing, every single day of our lives, the best that we can. In two years' time, ladies and gentlemen, I hope to represent you at my seventh Olympics. And I hope... <laughs> And I hope that just as that one afternoon at Stone Mountain, Atlanta, I had a little angel 
guiding me to win my singles medal. I hope I can bring back a doubles medal for all of you. Thank you very much.